Futures trading is risky and can result in substantial financial loss. Never put a futures position on without a stop loss order in place. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, traders from across the globe. Welcome to Short Term Trading Live with Oscars Friday Roundup. We got 5407. We've had some week, if you guys have been with me. The S&P, we were walking all over that market like we owned it. Day after day, we nailed highs and lows, and on days we couldn't get in, our analysis was dead on, but we missed it by a dollar or two of buying the lows. So go Omni, go Omni, we've been good this week. I got some charts I'm going to throw up for you. We'll take a look at some of the things that we looked at during the week, and uh, you'll see some of my mentality behind these trades, why I think we should keep going. Likely, every day is a new day, we'll do our analysis and be sure, but so far so good. During the week I had a couple of things on the board that we spoke about, and you know during my Friday roundups I like to get back to the, the lessons that we discussed throughout the week. Never chase the market, keep your emotions in check, never ever ever chase the market. A couple of days ago, you guys seen me place an order, you placed all your orders with me, the market got close to our buy but never got there and I sat on my hands. I used my patience. I kept my emotions in check. That is the only way that you can really do this properly. Never chase the market because what happens many times is if you chase that market and you get in because you missed your buy level and it stops cold on you and drops, well now your whole setup for the day has been thrown out the window because your stop is way lower than where you originally planned on losing money and you're, you've changed your stops usually many things will happen if you start chasing the market but mainly what will happen to you is you'll get into trades at the wrong prices your stops will get hit and then if they get hit there's so much more than you had planned on losing sometimes you'll actually get in but then if you think about us, we're short-term traders with a long-term plan here. If you get into that market and you jumped ahead of yourself, well, now your profit is that much smaller than you had planned on making that day. So if you jump ahead of yourself and you don't stick to your guns and you start chasing, if your profits are shorter and your losses are larger, at the end of the year, it is not going to help your bottom line. So keep that in mind. Do not chase the markets. They will be here tomorrow. If you can't get in, you can't get in. That's part of showing no emotions when you trade. Um, it's never too soon to take a profit. That is one of my golden rules. It is never too soon to take a profit. If you get into a trade and that trade is profitable, I don't care if it's profitable for $2. If you feel like taking it, take your profit and run. That is the best way to trade. If you can ring that register once a day, ching, ching, you rang the register, you hit a base hit, you will win that ball game come the end of the game or the end of the year. So at all times, keep that in mind. It is never too soon to take a profit. I have never once sat back and said, why did I get out here? Look how much better it went up. I said, wow, thank goodness I caught a piece of that move and I was profitable for the day. There are a lot of people who are what, when that thing runs up, let's say you got long and you jumped out for three S&P dollars and it ran up eight more and you're sitting there saying, oh, I wish I was in that market. Well, you know what? I'd rather be sitting there saying I wish I was in a market than stuck in a market with the wrong position wishing I was out. And a lot of those people who are, you think are enjoying the next five or six points that you didn't get in, a lot of them may be short and panicking. So don't think the grass is greener on the other side of the fence. Keep that in mind. It's never too soon to take your profits. I live off of it. The other day you see me jump in at $14.99 and a half, take a profit at $15.08 and a half. I thought it was going to $15.13 that day, but $15.08 and a half was plenty of profit for me. I used my rule. It's never too soon to take a profit. Lo and behold, it turns out to be the highs of the day. So there you go. I showed that to you right before your own eyes. I never tell you anything I don't do myself. So let's see if you can stick to that rule. It is very important. I had received an email about my 10% weekend rule, the Friday rule. I will explain it to you again. It's pretty simple. If you're trading in a market that is about to close within 5 to 10% of contract highs, go home long the market for the weekend. 
That is the general rule. It means that likely is on Monday, very high average that you will be able to get out of that trade with a profit right on the opening on Monday, or at least right after the opening, you should get a run up a bit higher and be able to profit on that trade. On the downside, it means the same thing. If we are about to close within 5 to 10% of contract lows on a Friday afternoon, you go home short that market and likely is on Monday morning you'll have a lower opening and can take profit. Do I advocate taking positions over the weekend? I do not. There is no control over what happens geopolitically in the marketplace for you to do something about it if geopolitically something goes wrong over the weekend. So the weekend rule does work, but it's for you guys that don't mind taking the added risk over the weekend. It's not usually my game, but it is a good rule that works, so I put it out there for you guys. Discipline, 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 and patience. Discipline is the most important thing you can ever put into your trading mentality when you're trading. And that goes back to never chasing the market, sticking to your guns, don't cancel your stops just because you get nervous, place your stops first, sit on your hands when you're in a position, if it's getting towards your stop and you're getting itchy. These are all disciplines that need to be incorporated into your trading. If you don't use discipline, you will find yourself staring at the ticker, getting pulled in, changing stops, cancel replacing orders, selling short when you should have been long. I know these mistakes take place. I've done, done them many, many times over in my life before I reached the level where I am at now with my Omni. And we are in tune with markets and forget about emotion. Our discipline is as solid as the day is long. We are like a rock. I say that every day. We never, ever deviate from our discipline. It is the biggest part of anything you can do to try to trade successfully. Discipline, discipline, discipline. Say that to yourself as often as you say emotions are out and stops are in. It is so important to adhere to a good disciplinary attitude when you trade. Mentality is 99% of what it takes to win in these markets. And if you get on the wrong side with your mentality and you become defensive, the markets will reach right into that pocket of yours and take your money. It'll pull it right out of your wallet. You cannot trade defensively. And to get defensive is when you start letting your emotions get involved. And then, of course, you've gotten away from your discipline. So discipline, discipline, discipline. It is so important. If you guys would like to learn more about this, come join me at the Mandalay Bay because there's a lot I can show you guys. You know I've been talking about bridging the gap in all of my videos. I talk about placing stops first. There's a universe of things that I have taught to you guys or at least I have tried to convey to you in my videos and I will be live in the Mandalay Bay May 14th, 15th, 16th and 17th at your disposal if you'd like to come down in Vegas and see me which is just in nine days from now. Nine, eight, somewhere right around there, but it's coming soon. So if you'd like to come down, shoot me out an email at oscarinvegas at gmail.com. Let me know you're coming. I'll be ready for you. It's coming soon. I am so excited about this, guys. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. It is coming soon. Anyway, I got some charts I want to throw up for you guys. I think you're going to like what you see. Uh, there'll be some flashbacks of a couple of things I said. In fact, if I remember right, I stood in front of the camera and said, new contract highs are imminent, it's coming soon. Next day I said, we're going to get them, get ready for them. And boom, we got those new contract highs. So take a look at the flashbacks. I'll come back to you. I'll show you the charts. And then um, I guess we'll wrap up. So far, so good. I think you'll like these charts. Give me a moment. We are at the moment currently getting ready to take off, which will likely take us to new contract highs. Very nice. Very simple. How you could not peg that is beyond me. If you've been following me, you should be able to spot stuff that's this easy by now. If not, stay with me and I'll make sure you get there at some point because I can do this and I can teach this to you guys. So here it is again. We were looking at this yesterday. I said we're going to get short, we're going to make money, and then we're not going to stay short because I feel support will hold. And boom, there it was. It held. If this holds true for tomorrow, we will make new contract highs. Let's see what happens. Okay, so you've seen the charts. You see why I told you yesterday, do not marry this thing. Do not get caught with your pants down. It's only a breather. Boom, we hit that support straight back up. 
And here we go, baby. New contract highs. Here we come. Oh, I hope they don't catch me on this one. You've seen me make these predictions before. I think we're going to get it. So let's see what happens. Sit tight, get long, and let's see if we can take this elevator right up. Hey, so far so good. We didn't get long yesterday, but the Omni had the direction pegged. We were just off by a couple of ticks, and away we went to the upside. We talked about new contract highs being eminent. I say here we go. We'll get them today. Let's take advantage of that. So you've seen the flashbacks, you see, you know me, I always, always telegraph and project out what my ideas are and where I think markets are going. And I, so far, thank you Omni, I think every time I've stood in front of this camera and said, we're going to new contract highs or we're going to lows or this is going to happen, so far so good, this Omni has been fantastic. And you heard me say it a couple of days ago, new highs are imminent, you heard me say, that's it, we're going to new highs, I hope they don't get me. Well, we did it, and now let me show you why. These charts, I think, um, you know, should explain a little bit of that story. So here are the charts. You got, for you guys that have been following me, we started putting out videos around here, December 15th. We've been kind of very lucky catching these little dips high and low. Then we had this move up here, and if you guys follow my videos back, somewhere in between the beginning and the, the middle of February, you heard me talk about how this market now has this little rounding top, but it's been bullish for so long that if it took a breather, I would not be shaken. I would not worry too much about it. And that if it held, if it never got below the 1300, 1290 area, I would remain bullish long term. Well, then it started to break. And if you guys were with me, you remember we got long right down here. We were short most of this down move. We got long at 1373, and then we've been riding these little runs to the top and bottom of this channel ever since. I don't know if we'd literally have had five losing days throughout this entire move as far as S&P is concerned. Now, when I talk about staying steadfast to your plan, my plan has always been, and again, luckily I say these things on video so they can actually be researched and you can go back and see that I am certainly an analyst who speaks by by what he tells will happen next and not what's happened in the past. So I've told you that we'd probably get this rally out of this hole and we'd get to the 1462 to 77 zone, which is in between these two lines. And if we built a base above that, we would rally into the 15 area and make new contract highs. Well, here it is, the entire chart, the dip, the rally out, and boom, new contract highs as we stated would happen and there it is it's all technical ladies and gentlemen there is no voodoo here there's no crystal ball this is technical analysis 101 and it's easy to show you and it's what i like to do now here we go i took that same chart and magnified it a little bit and if you guys go back and take a look at my videos and you take a look at these dates and times you'll see that when we rallied out of the hole from that first time and we got up around 1452 1454 1456 we got short we took a little down move, we got long again, we stayed bullish minded all through this move and then these last five or six days we were short, long, 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 missed one by two dollars, got long and long again. We caught just about every single one of these moves and look at how simple this is. You have a simple parallel channel taking place after a market had a really long run up and then a drop off take it shook out some weak hands some shorts that shouldn't have been in there or some longs that shouldn't have been in there the market dump shook them out never shook me never shook my followers not if you guys were following me and listening to what i had to say and we played this like a fiddle straight up and out of the hole this is the s p june chart and if you remember just a few days ago I said 1482 and a half to 81 and a half. If we hold that up away, we will go for new contract highs. And you heard me say that projected out in those flashbacks that you just seen. So here it is. Proof is in the pudding. It held that 82 and a half, and we made the contract highs of 1517 today. Unbelievable how well technical analysis works. That, my friends, came right off the charts. There was no magic, no voodoo, no crystal ball. There is no holy grail. There are just our there is just us doing analysis and the charts telling us where we should go next. The next thing that I would like to take a quick look at is where stochastics have been on this S&P move all throughout. 
Stochastics for quite some time this last week especially have been pinned. And they start, they're just dipping up and down. Well, here's what you do with stochastics when they're pinned in a market and you don't know where, where you should trade them. Normally, stochastics give you a dip down for a buy, a rally up for a sale, a dip down for a buy, a rally up for a sale, dip down for a buy. Well, when you become pinned in a market that becomes bullish, you use the exact same motion, but you take it off these little moves. A, a rally up for a sale, a dip down for a buy. Rally up for a sale, dip down for a buy. And it will work almost the same, but you have to shrink it down from this to this. And you just have to look at these moves, and they will indicate where we're going next. And according to this slight little wiggle I see right here, we may have put our top in for a couple of days. I'm not saying that because I take my analysis one day at a time and I have not done my Sunday evening homework to see what I think Monday but the slightest wiggle indication right here tells me I better go look at all the rest of my indicators and check my Omni on this market because that is a sure sign of some possible weakness. NASDAQ has the exact same sort of formation that the S&P has had it has been in this parallel channel and again, we've been trading the NASDAQ mirror image to the S&P, and we've been nailing it day after day. And the day that S&P held that 82 and a half area, the NASDAQ also held its support in the exact same spot on the exact sort of same slope of this parallel channel. And boom, we rallied out for new contract highs. Again, ladies and gentlemen, this is, there's nothing very sophisticated about this sort of analysis I'm showing you. Spot a trend, spot the wiggles inside that trend, and follow it along. It's quite simple. I've shown you this day after day. You see I put my numbers out and they almost work side by side with where the market goes next, and it's basically coming off a of very simplified analysis. Again, stochastics in the NASDAQ market tell us We've had some nice rallies. We had this rally yesterday, or two days ago. Stochastics backed off a little, and they've already hooked in NASDAQ and telling me that there's a possibility of a little weight in the NASDAQ as well coming on Monday. So look at that. And you've heard me say before, we've done a contest in the past. If you haven't seen it, you can go back and take a look at some of our videos. And it was called NASDAQ versus S&P. Which, which one is the leading indicator? Well, most of the analysts in my forums, as well as myself, have come up with the NASDAQ gives a slight indication of where we're going first before the S&P. S&P's got a little bit of a hook. NASDAQ already has a completed hook stating that we may go down on Monday. So one of the things that we followed and did a contest on together may be happening before our eyes. Again, that is not a recommendation. I need to do my homework Sunday evening before I know where I think we're going to go next. Euro currency out of the blue. Look at this now. You've seen how markets work really well in parallel trends. This isn't exactly parallel because the top slopes down a little, but it's close enough. You can buy it, rally, you can sell it, you buy it off the line, boom, it hits the line, finally comes back off, hits the support line. Likelihood is if we do not take the support out just under 136, we will rally above or into the 138 area. Take a look at it. Euro currency looks very good right here. Barring taking out the support on the 136 even, Euro currency, my friends, is going up here somewhere. A nice little run coming. Take a look at that chart for you currency and Forex traders. Tell me what you think about that. I'd like to hear your analysis. I'd like for you to write in to me and let me know what you think. What's your opinion on that chart? Stochastics on the Euro currency. Again, because the euro currency has been pegged, stochastics have not been taking the big swings to the top above 80 and down below 20. So you have to learn to read it for what it is. The last time you had a major dip down, stochastics held about this level and popped out. We're just about down there again. The market itself tells me it's a little bullish. Stochastics tell me they're a little bullish. Many other indicators I look at say that. And as long as we hold the support above 13600, it will be bullish. Okay, so that's my chart segment, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that helps you. Go home and do your own homework, and please get back to me on some of your own charts and your own chart analysis. So, 
you've seen the charts, you see that it was, nothing's ever simple, but those charts spoke to us. They told us where we were going next. And if you guys remember, I said it in so many videos, don't get faked out here, don't get caught with your pants down, don't get too bearish, this thing's going to run for new contract cars, and all it has to do is break out above that 62 to 77 zone and build a plateau, we'll go over 15, all of that has happened, but the important thing about that, whether I was right or wrong, who cares, I'm going to be wrong a lot, you guys will hate me at that point in time, we have been right, but the point about it is, I've stuck to my guns, I've stuck to my plan all the way through this. We had that market go down, back up, zigzag, and you heard me stick and watched me stick to my plan and stick to my guns as solid and steadfast as I tell you to be. Now, as far as somebody teaching you, if they teach you by their actions, it's really the only way for you to learn. So watch what I do. I show it to you. I... I, I Every day I act upon these things I tell you, and it is a great mentality, it is a great way to trade, and if you've been following me, you see that when we trade, everything is relaxed, we have a, a profit objective when we get in a market, we have an area where we planned on buying, and we have a sell stop in case we're wrong, all of that has been planned before markets ever open, and then we take that plan and we act it out to the letter every single day. And that is the way, my friends, you will become successful at doing this and be able to withdraw your emotions. Okay? I hope I gave you a little bit of a lesson here today. I didn't do a Friday Roundup last week, so I thought I'd give you a little more, just a little more on charts and more things to think about on this one. I hope I'm helping. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know if I'm not, if there's other things that you'd like for me to cover. Send an email in. Call me. Get in touch with me either way. Let me know what's going on. And in fact, here's something else you can call us about or write to us. We were trying so hard to come up with a silly skit to open this video with. We haven't done one in a while. But you know, it seems like the well is dry this week. We couldn't come up with something that we deemed silly enough. So if you guys have some ideas of how we could do some silly skits for you, um, let us know. Write in some ideas. Hey, I'm willing to try anything. If it's going to make you guys laugh and entertain us, I'm more than willing to give it a try. Oh, no. I see the list. Mike, do you want me to read that? I want you to read this. Listen, do you remember the list, guys? I've been asking you to send me a list of names of what I should call my crowd. Well, the list has come in. And there's, uh, there's a couple of names on here, a couple of them are silly, but you know, I think I'll read them off to you. The list has gotten quite long, there's a few pages of them, and it's kind of silly, I like it. So, I know Omniacs, I've been calling you lately, I don't know why that one's stuck in my head, but let me go through a few of these and see what you think. Okay, so as the suggestions have come in, I wrote them down one at a time, the way they came in, and here we go. Gongs. Now, these, again, this is a reference as to what I am supposed to call you guys, my crowd, my friends, my traders, my, my Omniacs, whatever I'm supposed to call you guys, here's the list of your suggestions. So, let's let it rock and roll and see what happens. Gongs, pitwits, bulldogs, freaks, students, pals, the crew, extras, ant farm, my fellas, my boys, my children, my leeches, my soldiers, my warriors, my brothers, my traders, my followers, my lemmings, uh, my listeners, my viewers, Omni and his Oscars, Oscar and his Omnis, Chad, Chad, I, I, gotta, I, I love that one, I don't get it, but I love that one the best, Chad, you guys are Chad, uh, <laughs> Carboni's cronies, uh, okay, this one, hey, I'm just reading to you, these aren't my suggestions, Oscar is Moses, the traitors are Israel, I'm the other Ten Commandments, and little Mikey is Aaron. <laughs> the Minions, the, Accolo the Accolades, Randolph and the Mortimers, the Get-Go's, the Sesame Street Bunch, the Omniacs, the Omnitents, the Omniations, the Omniscients, the Omnitraders, the Omnipotents. There's more. Brothers and Sisters, one of your flock, Oscars, Oscarettes, Oscarites. Friends and Clients, The Masterminds, Friends, Oscars Omni, Omniites, Cronies, I think we've had Cronies on the list already, Omnisequi, for the, for the etymologists of us, The Crew, The Village, The Omni Tribe, The Ministry of Trade, I like that one, 
Uh, Oscar and the Omni Tunes. Omnivores. Omnivores, that's not a bad one. Club Omniism. Omniology. Oscar, the Omniologist. <laughs> Omnisomniacs. It's the Omnipath giving his Omnipathic medicine to his Omnichondriacs. Uh, the Hole in the Wall Gang. Omnifisticuffs. Named after the bare knuckle box of John Omni Sullivan III. You go, John Omni! I like that name. Uh, the Knuckleheads, the Omnioids, the Oscanoids, Oscar's Pets, and the Omniettes. Oh, and the Raging Bulls. That's the names, that's the list in its entirety so far. Keep sending them in. I think these are great. I could read these all night. These names have been fantastic. Keep sending them in. And remember, give us some ideas about some skits. We don't mind. We'll try anything. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, with that in mind, I hope you enjoyed the show this week. Don't forget, I tell you this all the time. Mikey, I want you to put all this stuff at the bottom because I don't want to say it. And you know what I'm going to say next. Stops Stop. are in, emotions are out! Futures trading is risky and can cause substantial financial loss. We do not claim or guarantee that you will profit from the information provided. That being said, I am a 24-year seasoned trader on and off the floors. This is how I've made my living for many, many years. Good luck trading.